everyone. God bless you. Let some folk know we're on right now because this is a very exciting and important study that I have for you this week. Let me ask you a question. Um, life is tough, right? Where do you go to get power to survive the things that you're going through? How have you made it through some of the things you made it through when you know you had no power, you were confused, you were lost, or the situation was overwhelming to you, and yet you made it through? How many know there, there is this connection with God that we believe is the power of our life? What I'm talking about and the answer to those questions is we're doing a study called Where the Power Comes From. There's too many believers out there. You can't duplicate the power of God. You can't get the power of God in your life when you need it because we haven't even concentrated on where that power comes from. So our, our, our lesson is entitled Where the Power Comes From. And we're talking about, if you haven't figured out, God the Holy Spirit. That there's a dispensation in God that God has created that lets us know at all times there's a power source that's flowing through our life. There was a time when Jesus Christ came down to give us salvation, right? Came down with the plan of redemption, right? That he came down and actually showed the gifts and the power of God and came through healing and fulfilled the call of being the Messiah. And then when he left, in the book of Acts, right? When he left, he said that I will not leave you comfortless. So, uh, matter of fact, we're going to look at that text. John 14, 16, and 17. So, I'm so excited. I want to make sure you're with me here. We're talking about where the power comes from. Let some people know we're on. Share with somebody. Because you're going to need, in this day and time, you're going to need to know how to get the power of God working in your life. I'm not talking about that pretend stuff. I'm not talking about running around, you know, in church rituals and doing things that really you know yourself is an outward show, but it really doesn't give you any power. That's not what I'm talking about. How do I know that I really have a divine connection of help? How do I know when I pray for healing, healing is going to come? How do I know when I pray for my deliverance that I believe deliverance comes? How do I know that my faith is working? All of that. God did not lead to us. He himself created a power source in us so that we would not fail. I want to share with you, that's why you haven't gone under. That's why you haven't quit. That's why you haven't given up. Because God has placed a power source in us. Can I give you a sequence so you can understand it? John 14, 16, 17 says this. And I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, here's the key, for he dwells in you and shall be in you. God said, when I leave, I don't want you comfortless. I, I, I paid the price for the pain of redemption. Now, I need to empower you as my servants so you can finish building the kingdom of God so you can walk around knowing that you can not only handle the task that God has given you but be able to survive what you're going through while you're doing that so God said in John 14 16 17 I'll give you another comforter that comforter is the Holy Spirit how do I know that because we go to first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 tells us and it's what a lot of people don't know what Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Jesus came, fulfilled the role of Messiah, left, did not want to leave us comfortless, and gave us a power source called the Holy Spirit. And then it tells us, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, don't you know your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and you are not your own? That's what I'm teaching. Many of us, you know Jesus, you call on the name of Jesus, you talk to Jesus, 
You speak with Jesus. You pray in the name of Jesus. You know God the Father. He is the creator. You'll say, God help. I'll lift my eyes to the hills. But when do you talk to the Holy Spirit? He is God. I went over last week the Trinity and the Trinitarian doctrine, doctrine of Trinity, so you would understand that the Holy Spirit is God. So God lives in us. And of course, a very familiar scripture that you know which brings this together. So first Jesus left. He didn't want to leave us comfortless. He said, I'm going to give you another power. Acts 1 and 8, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And then 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20 says, don't you know the power is in you? That's what I want to talk about. Where does the power come from? How can you, how can we get to know the Holy Spirit in everything that it's doing in our lives? And that's the blessing that we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to share with you who God is. I told you the Holy Spirit, sometimes we think of him as an it and as a thing. But man, right now, he is living in you to give you the divine life of God. Man, you need to catch this. Romans 8 and 2. For the law of the life, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Wow. Here's what God said. The law of that spirit of life. Talk about power. Man, there are times when the enemy has tried to drag you down, when life has gotten heavy. Come on. Psychologically, mentally, emotionally, we found ourselves where we could not take it. Please, please understand. There is a spirit that comes in us, the Holy Spirit, that spirit of life that was in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So when Jesus came and won our deliverance, right, through the plan of redemption, he redeemed us, he placed a law into motion called the spirit of life. This spirit of life freed me from the law of sin and death. So Jesus Christ made sure that the divine attributes that's in God the Holy Spirit, that's in God the Father, God the Son, part of that is that it frees us from the law of sin and death. What does that? The Holy Ghost living in me. How do I know I have the Holy Ghost? It's not demonstrated only by me speaking in tongues. It's not demonstrated by me, you know, going into all kind of fits doing worship service. No, it's demonstrated by your character, by your actions, and by the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us that if you don't have the, if you're not as a son of God, you have the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the Spirit, you're not a son of God. So it has nothing to do, when you got saved, you were full of the Spirit of God. And now it gives us divine life. Where the power comes from? God made sure that we can walk around free from sin and death if we use the power that's in us. Listen to me, somebody. It's not easy. See, I'm tired of us going through and making God a failure by us going through these church rituals and calling on the latest fad and not realizing that's not what delivers us. Anybody who would tell you we're free from the law of sin and death, that it's easy, is lying to you. Those of us who overcome and make it know that it is not easy, that we have to call on that power, that we have to learn to stand in that power. That we have to make sure when things are falling apart, we rely on the power of the word. We don't let what the world is doing to us stop us. Amen, somebody. I know why I can't go down because there's a spirit of life in me that was given to me by this power of the Holy Ghost that lives in my body. Somebody listen to me just say the Holy Ghost lives in me. You need to understand that. And I need to do it so it's not this spooky thing. You need to understand, he gave us the ability to have divine life. You can walk and overcome any trial in your life if you call on the power. But you got to know that power placed in you by the Holy Spirit. He gives us divine holiness. Who does that? By living in me, he gives me. He who? He, God the Holy Spirit, gives me a divine holiness. You know what divine holiness is? It means it's not a holiness that I can do in my flesh, but because he lives in me, I can overcome and put down some things. I know I'm not the only one. You're sitting there listening to me. How many of you know there's some things your flesh desires, there's some things you used to do that you can't do anymore because the Holy Spirit pricks your conscience, 
There's some stuff you would say, some things you would do, but you can't do it anymore because you know I have to walk in holiness. How do you know that? Because the Holy Spirit living in you has given you divine holiness. Listen to Romans 1 and 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power, here it is again, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Please understand, any time after Christ has left, if we're living in the time where the church is coming together and the church is continuing to build the kingdom of God, Jesus left, but he left us the Holy Spirit in us. Anytime you hear the spirit of life, that's the Holy Spirit making sure that I can make it. Making sure I can overcome my weaknesses and my sins. When you hear the spirit of holiness, that means that I have a spirit in me that says I can walk in holiness. I can change. But I got to make sure I stand long enough to get through what I'm going through. Look at that. The rest of that verse says, Romans 1 and 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So you know when we were redeemed it tell, the Bible tells us to liken ourselves to Jesus who was resurrected from the dead. You now have a resurrected life. In that resurrect, resurrected life is the spirit of life which makes you be able to overcome sin. Listen to me. You can overcome sin. I don't care what sin is plaguing you. And it also gives you a divine holiness which means you can walk in holiness. All walking in holiness means, the word holiness means to be separate means to be set apart. When I walk in holiness, I do stuff separate. I don't want to please the world and lose God. I rather please God and lose the world. So you got to understand holiness blesses me to continue to walk in that power of God. He gives us divine righteousness. Write this down. These are all the benefits of the power of the Holy Ghost living in you. Divine life, right? Divine holiness. Now divine righteousness. Where is that? Romans 8 and 4. That the righteousness, I love this, of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Can I unpack that? That the righteousness, right standing with God, right? Righteousness of living above my flesh of the law. Because the law that God gave through Moses was righteous, but we could not attain to the law. There's nobody sitting there looking at me. That's why I don't pay attention to the judgmental Christians, uh, the ones who act like they want you to believe that they got this special seal from God, so they walk around in righteousness and holiness all the time. Uh-uh. They wrestle and fight just like me. Name the most holiest believer you know. One of the most Highest celebrity saint, bishop, apostle, uh, preacher, I don't care who it is, they have wrestled with something. And if they're an honest preacher, they will tell you that we all wrestle. And the only way I make it is because of that. You know, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. Don't ever get to the point where you think or let somebody fool you that they are just righteous. No, the law was righteous. It was trying to teach me how to be righteous, but the text says that the law was fulfilled in us when we walk not after the flesh. Here it is again. But after the spirit. What spirit? The spirit that lives in you. Where the power comes from is there's a spirit living in you. Every now and then you need to check yourself and say, I got the Holy Ghost living in me. That's why it's possible for my faith to overcome. That's why it's possible for me to believe in the impossible. That's why it's possible that I can make it through stuff that I don't know how I made it. My flesh was so weak I couldn't get over it. That's why when the darkest day of my life come, I didn't take my life. That's why when the darkest day of my life came, God brought me back because the Holy Spirit living in me gives me all of the divine attributes of God, but I got to know this and I got to know where the power comes from. Divine life, divine holiness, divine righteousness. So the law which I could not fulfill, once the Holy Ghost came in me, that law, I can now fulfill the law of righteousness. What does it mean? I got a spirit to guide me, to convict me, and bring me back to a place of righteousness. When I was sinning, I could sin and thought it was okay. When I got in Christ, maybe because I wasn't being sanctified, I could sin and thought it was okay. 
But then after a while, if you start walking after the Spirit of God, let the Spirit that's in you, the Holy Spirit leading God your steps, all of a sudden a divine righteousness comes on you that says, I can't do that stuff. And I don't mean I can't, like I don't have the ability. Something inside of you will just say, no, my God has brought me too far. He's been too good for me to malign his name and not stand when I know I should stand. Yes, it's an impulse. Yes, it's something I desire. But I will not embarrass the God who pulled me up out of the gutter and blessed me and made me who I am today. No, I can stand because I want God to be glorified. That's what real righteousness is when you walk after the spirit of life and not after your flesh. How do I do it? The Holy Ghost, I'm, I'm going back to this. I don't mean to be elementary, but I want you to follow me. Jesus left, didn't leave his comfortless. Acts 1 and 8 said, you shall receive power. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6 9 says, that power is the Holy Spirit living in you. With the Holy Spirit living in you, you can now have divine life, divine holiness, and divine righteousness. The Holy Spirit living in me gives me the power where the devil's trying to mess with my mind and say I'm not okay. God, the Holy Spirit, God, the Father, God, the Son, who are all one, act in unity, are the ones regulating my life. Aren't you glad that God didn't leave you to you, but there's a spirit in you that even when you conk out, when you can't do it, when you're messed up, there's a spirit inside of us that continues to push us toward a goal of getting better. Um, I love the uh, Donnie McCrippin song, Stand, right? Uh, after you, what do you do after you've done all you can? You stand. How do you stand? Stand. How do I stand? Stand. I'm talking to somebody. Stand. That's good. But what's behind all that standing? What I'm talking about? The power of the Holy Ghost. You can stand because you're not standing in your power. You're standing in the power of God. Somebody ought to say hallelujah right there. You're standing in the power of God. Let somebody know this teaching is here. Somebody, uh, last week I got a text from someone that says, I've been so confused about the Holy Spirit. I'm glad you're teaching and preaching it this way. I'm going to get into the gifts and I'm going to get into the anointing and all of that. But right now, people got to know that he is God. He is the power source. And from the beginning of time, he's been the power source as the part of the Godhead. So the Holy Spirit is next divine truth. I like this one. Divine life, divine righteousness, divine holiness. Now he gives me divine. All divine means is that it's not of me. It's of God. Anything divine, any divinity, anything that is divine is that God part of us. That spirit of God in us that God said, you can walk around now. And you say, but God, or you say, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a, I sin. I still sin and fight. God knew that. That's why he put the spirit in you so that you can have the potential and you can rise to the level of making it and you can be sanctified every day to get better. Somebody all say, I'm getting better. That's what I believe. The people who fail are the ones who listen to the devil when the devil says, it's not getting any better. You know you can't stop that. You know you like looking at pornography. You know you like broken drugs. You know you like drinking. Now I know you've been going to church, but you've been going to church and you haven't been able to stop yet. That's why I'm telling you, yeah, but if you recognize the power, the divine power that's in you, here's the next one. There is a divine truth. Can I talk about truth for a moment? There is only one truth. Sometimes people get upset with me because I believe the only truth is what God said. Here's the, here's the, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I have people coming into my church and they say, well, you're a Baptist. You're not Pentecostal. You're not Church of Christ. You're not this. You're not independent. No, but I believe the word. This church is driven by the word of God. You get all hung up on your denomination and where you're coming from and still ain't living right. I don't care if you're Baptist, Pentecostal, Church of God and Christ. Don't nobody live right. There's sin in everybody's church. You just got to recognize that the one common denominator is the word of God, which activates, activates that Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, that's living in us. So I say, yeah, but, you know, the things we do. No, it's all by the power. The power does not come from your denomination. Doesn't come from the title of your church. Doesn't come from how sophisticated you are. It comes from God living in you, and you just got to use that power. That's why God can use anybody. 
a little child if he had to. I know you may have heard stories like this. I'm going to get back to the divine truth. But I remember when one of my grandkids, you know, they, they would mimic. They were coming to church. They would mimic prayer. And I'm sitting there, and my, my granddaughter walked up to me, put her hand on my head. And I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm praying. I didn't tell her I felt bad. I didn't say something was wrong. So that, again, is a calling of God, right? I believe God told her. But after she prayed for me, this may sound crazy, but I felt better. I just believe when God said, come to him like a little child. Don't come to me bringing me all of your judgmental talk about this one and that one. And your denomination don't speak in tongues. And you don't do this. They got nothing to do with the fact that I got just as much power because the power comes from the word of God. He upholds all things by the word of his power. The word of his power from the book of Hebrews. So what does that mean? The Holy Ghost lives in me. If I take that word and I allow that spirit that's in me to walk through me, I'll be able to conquer anything. Yes, I do believe there is uh, a tongue. I believe you speak another language. I'm not of that persuasion that gifts and healing, all that has disappeared. Because the word doesn't say that. What I'm saying to you, though, is quit relying on other stuff and thinking that's your power. That's why we don't make it. Trying to wait and get to a man to pray for you. Man, get in your house and pray for yourself. Get somewhere in the closet and realize that the Holy Ghost is living in you. And my prayer is just as strong as any, anybody else I can name. You got to know that the power comes from you. Man, you need this teaching because you're going to be laying in a hospital bed by yourself. You're going to be in a midnight hour by yourself. You're not going to be there with all the trappings and the beauty of a sanctuary and the pageantry of a big service. All you're going to have and all you need is a word from the Lord. Listen to John 14, 7, divine truth. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, here it is again, for he dwells in you and shall be in you. Have you got this yet? The Holy Ghost living in me is what makes me able to walk that line of power. It separates me from a regular person, from an unsaved person. It separates me because now I have divine truth living in me. What, what is divine truth? It means that the Holy Spirit comes in and it gives you a confirmation of the truth of God's word. Let me put it to you this way. You were out there sinning. I don't know when, you're, uh, when you actually got saved, when you made your confession and received the Lord and would change, you know, from who you were to what God said you are now, to a son of God. I don't know when your salvation came. I don't know what happened. I don't know the conditions. Here's what I do know is that all of a sudden you receive the Holy Spirit. You didn't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Meaning you received what he was saying. You know, many of us, I, I, and, I, and I was telling you, a lot of times people say, don't live by feelings. I agree with that. But man, you can never get close to God and not feel something. Because the reality is you're going to feel that power of God in you. How? By confirmation of the truth. Here's what happened when you got saved. Here's what happened when you got converted. All of a sudden, the divine truth hit you. Wow, God is real. You were quickened. You were awakened. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, And you were walking around dead in trespasses and sins, but the Spirit came and quickened or awakened you. That's divine truth. It's like when you get to that moment where fear is there, the illness is there, you're reading that word constantly. You're constantly pulling the word inside of you, believing that God is a healer. You're pulling that word inside of you that there's nothing impossible for God. You're hearing James, I can lay hands on the six. You're remembering that he was wounded for my transgressions. You're remembering that God said, call, call for the elders of the church and pray for the sick. And you start praying. All of a sudden, that divine truth overrides the lie of the world. And now that truth 
carries you down the road as you're driving. That truth lets you lay your head on your amen, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. On your pillow at night. Circumstances haven't changed. Things are still bad. But I'm laying and sleeping in that divine truth of God. It's the only thing that keeps you sane. You better hear me. So the Holy Spirit living in you, God the Holy Spirit, gives you divine life. He gives you a divine righteousness. He gives you divine holiness. He gives you divine truth. And here's something else. And we love this one. We have, because the Holy Ghost lives in us, we have something called the Spirit of Grace. The Holy Spirit lives in, living in me makes sure that I'm covered with divine grace. It's a spirit that somehow relieves me of my guilt for my transgressions. It, it takes me to a place where I know that I know that I know I can rely on God to have forgiven me, and I walk in sometimes just as if I hadn't sinned. Isn't this crazy? I mean, I know the thoughts that I thought, I know the things that I said, I know the stuff that I did, but because the Holy Ghost lives in me and there's a divine grace contingent, I now really believe what the Word of God says, which says that He's thrown my sins in the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. I believe God when He says, that he forgave me, that I'm walking in that forgiveness because of his grace. I believe the moment I got saved, I was forgiven, I'm being forgiven, I will be forgiven. The forgiveness of God is something that goes, is, is way beyond our thinking. We can't fathom that understanding because we don't know how to walk in divine grace. There's some of us that have, don't have the grace to forgive someone for one transgression against us. But God, come on, help me, somebody. I walk daily transgressing, and he gives me this divine grace. Look at Hebrews 10, 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be he be worthy of who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done so, watch this, despite the spirit of grace. All that text is telling us is that the punishment that you're going to receive on this side and also weighed in the balance of your final judgment, you understand me? That, that if you... If you ignore this grace of God, if you act like all God did under, you know, you, you so judgmental that you can't give anybody the understanding that when Jesus died, he paid the price. When you just step on that and you start judging people and you're holy but they're not and they got to do this if they want to be right. When you start doing that, when you took the blood of that covenant where Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. When you just trample over that, like, okay, yeah, but, but you still got to pay for your sin. God said, how are you trampling over that when I gave the spirit of grace? Hallelujah. All I'm telling you is that the divine spirit of grace comes from the Holy Spirit living in us. He makes sure that we find a place of repentance through his conviction. And he allows that spirit of grace to bless us as we're going through. Then we find out that the Holy Spirit himself, the reason God the Holy Spirit can do this in my life is he is eternal. Look at Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, there it is again, offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. That's why you have not Backsliding. What is backsliding? I don't even know. A lot of people who claim they know don't know. I believe, folk, if they were converted and really had walked with God and know God, I believe that those people are being tormented even in what they call their backsliding condition because of their conscience. So they never really got to the place where they just became a wide open sinner again because the Bible just says your conscience has once been purged. And once your conscience is purged, maybe you're stubborn, maybe you got a stronghold going on, but I wish a backslider would just put something in the chat and let people know, man, I had to come back. If you found out that your conscience was being so overwhelmed because you found out that there's a, a spirit that comes of God that lets me know once he called me, 
Nothing can pluck me out of his hands. Not without this battle royale. I mean, I see people, man, they look so tormented. Uh, sometimes I preach at a funeral and the folk had to come because it was a loved one. Here they are, they love the Lord, but they're not serving God. I mean, you know, if you want to call that being backslidden, they're struggling, but God hasn't let go of them yet. And so what God does in that situation, I watched them when, when, I, when I'm preaching the funeral. A lot of people, man, they, they're squirming, they're, they're, they're uncomfortable because they know that they were once, their mind was purged to understand that God is eternal. And once we became a part of him, we became eternal. And now they know a lot more clearer than someone who never received God. Man, I'm going to eternal punishment because I believe that God is eternal. And since God is eternal, I believe in eternity. So God said, but once I lived in you, you have to serve me. May sound crazy. He'll let you beat yourself up. He'll let you jump through hoops. But at the end of the day, you'll turn from the dead works, Hebrews 9, 14, to serve the living God. We're still talking about the attributes of the Holy Spirit. He possesses all three of the omnis, right? He's omnipresent. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. That means there's not a time when he is not near me. In my worst situation, the Holy Spirit, who's in me, is also surrounding me with all the benefits, the love, and the power of God. Someone listening to me now, you may be sitting in your house, and there may be some oppression going on or some darkness going on from situations and circumstances that have been created in your life. But you ought also know something that at the same time the Holy Spirit is present. You, you, Psalms 46, Psalms, 30, Psalms 139, you can't get out. Of, this is the blessing. I can't get out of God's presence once I, once I know who he is. He is a God that blesses me with, with a sense of, of understanding. Can, can we read? Let's do this. I know I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to myself too because the Holy Spirit just told me to look at this. Let's go through Psalms 46 for a minute and understand the presence of God. Go to Psalms 46. Go to Psalms 46. Let's look at how the Holy Spirit, who is that spirit presence of God living in us, is always there. So first of all, verse 1 of Psalms 46. You got it? Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength. Here it is. A very present trouble, a very present help in times of trouble. So, his presence brings us the provision of several things that verse says. First, I always got a refuge. Hallelujah. You don't ever have to stay where the trouble is. You got a refuge inside of you, meaning there's always a hiding place. There's always a scripture I can find and cover the situation I'm going through. There's always a place I can hide till my strength is there because it says he's my refuge and strength. So while I'm gaining that, he's my strength while I'm getting blessed and he's a very present help, meaning that even though I'm, I'm taking refuge in God because the situation is overwhelming, um, he's giving me strength so I can handle the situation, he stays with me. He's a very present help. We're talking about God's presence, how the Holy Spirit is always present because he lives in you. Verse 2 and 3 says this, Therefore, here's a big one, will not we fear though the earth be removed? Temporal things in life cause us to fear. Fear and anxiety is one of the harshest spirits we can deal with. There are things you can accomplish when you're not anxious that you can't accomplish when you're anxious and fearful. You still have the same skill, you have the same ability, but it's compromised by that spirit of fear coming in disrupting that connection that you have with God. Fear is a fear that Fear is a spirit that comes in to try to destroy us. And it's not a spirit from God, right? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So God said, therefore, we will not fear though the earth be removed. He just gave us the most dreaded thing. I'm not even going to fear if the earth just be removed. If it just 
drops into the sea. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with a swelling thereof, I'm not going to worry about it because of the presence of God. Look what he just said. His presence gives us this platform, this, this ability to stand. What do I mean? No fear. Um, he, he gives me the ability to not let fear ruin my life. Stronger in my, than, than the crisis. It says, um, so you won't fear even though the earth be taken away. God's spirit is stronger than any catastrophe that could happen in my life. And then he handles our spiritual warfare. He said, though the myth, though we got this big situation going on, because of his present, presence, we now, in the middle of the earth falling, and it's just a you know symbol, symbolic. Listen, the earth is falling, there's waters all around, the sea is dropping off, there's trouble everywhere. He said, but I can handle spiritual warfare. Anybody in spiritual warfare right now? Anybody been in spiritual warfare and understand that the spirit is so strong, if it was just my strength, I would have given up. <laughs> but I know that it's God. Let's finish this. Verse 4 and 5. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that very early. We're talking about the presence of God. He gives us power. Um, there is a river. Rivers always signify when you hear in streams which shall make glad the city of God. They, they signify that power moving and, and rushing power of the Holy Spirit. You know, rivers of anointing, uh, rivers of joy, rivers just and streams mean these are the things that push us toward God. And the verse says, shall make glad the city of God. God, God, God's anointing in God's word makes me glad in this sense. I'm glad I got God on my side. How many of you have said that? I am so glad. I'm not going through this by myself. How the, I am so glad I know how to pray. I'm so glad I know where that scripture is. I am so glad. Uh, don't worry. When you get ready, you, you tell your kids out. Your kid calls you up and says, your child calls you up and says, I'm going through something. Don't worry. Let me pray with you. And you find the right scripture because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, you're glad that you could reach out and help and you could pray and you could bless them. So the Spirit of God, His presence, has a way of making us glad even in the worst situation. Um, and the Holy Spirit and the, whole, the holy place of the tabernacle, and God is in the midst of her. Since God is here, I'm stable. I got gladness, write this down, and I got stability. What? Not just me. If you agree with me, just say, I should have fallen apart. Have you been through a situation so horrible that when you look back over the situation, you don't know how you got through it? And even now, it sends shivers up your mind thinking, man, how did I stand up under all of that? How did I make it through that chemo? How did I make it through that accident? How did I go through that healing? How did I go through that time when I had no money and didn't know how to eat? How did I go through those situations? When I was dealing with my emotions and my mind, you know, uh, on the outside I was trying to live life, and on the inside there was a raging storm of anxiety and stress going on. But somehow I made it through those years. How many can look back and see years I was standing on the Word of God? And God brought me through. And I like the part of that scripture in what it says, and that right early. God has perfect timing when it comes to rescuing us. We're still in Psalm 46. Look at verse 6 through 9. The heathen rage, kingdoms were moved, but he uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. There's his presence. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come. Behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made on the earth. He makes wars to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow in sunder, cut up the spear in sunder, and burn the chariot with fire. Um, kingdoms fall. What kind of kingdoms? Strongholds the enemy put up in my mind. They fall. Uh, his power that's in us lets us stand because we can remember. Come, behold the works of the Lord. When I get in trouble, I just go back and behold how far he brought us. Uh, my wife and I were just going over a situation in our lives the other day, 
when we were dealing with the ability that we have now to help people, right? Um, I can say, yeah, I'll, I will buy that for you. Or I'll help someone. Then you have money to buy something for myself. But isn't it something how far God has brought us that we can bless someone else because of who he is? And as a matter of fact, I was uh, in the office at church today, and one of my members talked about just how the Lord laid that on her heart and the ability and gratefulness that she can do that. Look at Psalms 46, verse 10 and 11. Here's the power. This time, now, I'm telling you about his presence. That's what we're talking about, right? Omnipresence, always around. This psalm is just signifying that he's always around. But verse 10 and 11, by the power, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And then he goes back to tell us again, to reassure us, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. My brother, my sister, whatever, whatever you're going through, wherever you are, you don't have to worry because the Holy Spirit, the God, the Lord of hosts, right? The, when God's name, Lord of hosts, is his battle name. The, the Lord that has the host of, of angels, the host of spirits that are protecting us and blessing us. That Lord of the host, the ones who's in charge, God, the Holy Spirit, God, the Son, God, the Father, the God of Jacob is with us and they are a refuge. I love this because be still does not mean be still, right? It don't mean go somewhere and just sit still. It can mean that, but it means just pause for a minute. And all you got to know, no matter what else is going on in your, in your life, you got to know, I am God. That's God speaking. Just say to yourself, true. This is bad, but he is God. And when I say God, I don't say what the world says when I say God. I'm talking about uh, El Shaddai, right? El Elyon. Uh, I'm talking about the, the, the liverer, Jesus Christ, uh, the sin bearer, uh, the way maker. When we say God, there's a, I'm talking about the divine truth God. I'm talking about the God of the Holy Spirit who has power to deliver me. When you look at any um, place in Scripture from Old Testament to New Testament where there was a miracle done, you'll see that there was a Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit came in, and that power was just all-consuming of whatever the situation is. He brings us confidence because we know that He is God. Well, that's all I have time for today. But uh, uh, tonight, you know, I want you to just get this. Go back and look at last week's message. Let somebody know, you're going to need this. This is not something I just decided to teach on my own. One day I was sitting there floundering in a situation. I know after, you know, 35 years of pastoring and all these years I've been saved and knowing God and the prayers I send up and other people getting delivered, but I was floundering and God told me very quickly, you don't realize, you don't know me. I'm thinking, well, I do know you, God. I mean, I do know you, Jesus. No, no. God, Holy Spirit, living in you. The one that was sent here. I can keep you. That's what God said. Tell my children they don't know me. They don't realize I'm the power. I'm teaching you where the power comes from. Don't miss this. This is Pastor Duncans. I'll see you next week, and we can pick up this text from here. God bless you. Have a great evening, and remember, God the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, and that's where your power comes from.